Assalamu alaikum everyone. I have another surprise for you today. Just like the other day, I showed you the site where the Council of Nicaea had taken place. That's one of the sites. There is another candidate, of course. There's another site which is buried uh, underwater, okay? Not very far from the site I showed you. So the Council of Nicaea, uh, that spot today, that church is a masjid. Another spot which is very important, very little appreciated, or very little uh, researched, uh, I must say, is this spot, and I'll explain why. Sultan Muhammad al Fatih took the city of Constantinople in the year 1453 from the Roman Byzantines. And since then, this city has been in the hands of the Turks, okay, Muslim Ottoman Turks. And the city of Constantinople became a center of Islam or Islamic learning or the Islamic civilization since then, right? Hagia Sophia was the greatest church in the city. It was a great structure resurrected in the year 537 CE by Emperor Justinian, a very important emperor in the history of the Roman Empire and the history of Christianity. Emperor Justinian is the one who patronized that building and it was completed in 537 CE, just about 40 years before the Prophet of Islam was born. And that building was very important. It was gigantic. It was the largest standing structure in the world for 1000 years the largest indoor standing structure in the world the largest dome possibly in the world and that structure was turned into a mosque a masjid and then sultan muhammad al-fatih gave the christians another site for them to worship which was another church a very important church built in the fourth century by emperor constantine that church because it was earlier it had more importance it was holier in many ways because it was called the Church of Holy Apostles. The Emperor Constantine built that church in the, the year, um, in, in, in the fourth century when he was here, after he made Constantinople his capital. And that church was built and he wanted to make that church very important. For that reason, he got many relics together. He uh, wanted to bring those relics and place them in that church so that he can somehow raise the status of that particular church. And he found the relics of uh, St. Luke, St. Uh, Timothy and St. Andrew. Okay, And St. Luke being allegedly one of the companions or disciples of Jesus Christ, one of the authors of the four gospels. Okay, So their relics were brought here and they were placed in this church. Right? So this church came to be known as the Church of Holy Apostles. This church became the most important church in Constantinople. Even after Hagia Sophia, which was much larger, was built later on. The reason why this church was important was because all Roman emperors were crowned here in this church, in the Church of Holy Apostles. Okay? And they would be buried in this church. Okay. The question is what happened to that church after Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih took the city of Constantinople. That church was given to the Christians. The then Christian patriarch actually abandoned the church and moved on to another church and then it was in ruins. Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih took the spot, demolished the church and built a masjid at its place that you can see right now. This is the Fatih Mosque. If you follow me. This masjid was built by Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih. Uh, it was started in 1560s and unfortunately due to a major earthquake in the region, it fell uh, in the mid 18th century and it was rebuilt once again. But since that time, it has been a masjid. So um, why am I telling you all this? I just want you to imagine all those Roman emperors you have been hearing about all your lives. Emperor Constantine, Emperor Justinian, Justinian the Great, okay, Heraclius, the same emperor to whom the Prophet wrote a letter inviting him to Islam. And you can read the text of that letter in Sahih al Bukhari, okay. There is a long hadith documenting that particular anecdote, okay. So these were very important and even subsequent emperors, okay, many important emperors who were buried here up to the 11th century and beyond. The Crusaders, when they invaded the city of Constantinople, 
they invaded or they looted this church because it was so important. All the treasure of the Christian faithful was kept here. Relics were kept here. Emperors were buried here. So the Crusaders, when they took the city of Constantinople during the Fourth Crusade in the year 1204, they sacked this very church and looted it. They even opened the tomb of Emperor Heraclius and took his crown, uh, his hair hanging from the crown uh, at the same time. At the same time, so goes uh, the narrative. So this is a very important spot. Constantine was buried here, Heraclius was buried here, Justinian and all, and all major subsequent Roman emperors or Byzantine emperors were buried here. So right here, under this floor, some of the greatest Roman figures or some of the greatest Christian figures, the, the remains of John Chrysostom, Saint Chrysostom were also uh, interred here. So, uh, so, the, so the point is, brothers and sisters, this is a very important place. Not many people know that Al-Fatih Mosque, built by Sultan Muhammad Al-Fatih, is where the Church of Holy Apostles was, and this is where all those great Roman emperors were buried. So their tombs may well be underneath this ground anywhere. All those Roman emperors throughout those centuries were buried here repeatedly, and they were crowned here. Now at that spot stands a great monument, uh, a great dedication to Islam and the Muslim civilization, the Masjid Sultan Muhammad al Fatih Mosque. And this is a magnific magnificent structure. A lot of work and effort and artwork has gone into it. It's a masterpiece of calligraphy and architecture. And now we will take you very close to Sultan Muhammad al Fatih, if you follow me very quickly, inshallah, while we keep talking. Not many Muslims um, know about this history. They know Al Fatih Mosque is here. They know Sultan Muhammad Al Fatih is buried here. They know that this uh, neighborhood is called Al Fatih, but they don't know that this is where, at this spot, in this place, uh, were buried some of the greatest Roman emperors, including Constantine and his successors like Constantius, Julian, and the rest and up to Justinian and Heraclius. Okay. So we're gonna get our shoes. Yeah. We're gonna grab our shoes and uh, we're gonna now make our way to the tomb of Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih. After Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih uh, passed away, he is the man who conquered Constantinople. And uh, we can we can walk like this if you don't mind. And I want to very quickly show you the tomb of the Sultan as well. The Sultan is buried right next to the Masjid. Uh, the Masjid was built first, and the Sultan was buried later. And he is one of the greatest generals, one of the greatest Sultans, one of the greatest kings in Muslim history, due to the fact that he took. One of the greatest cities in the world, one of the most strategically important cities in the world called Constantinople. This was a great victory in favor of Islam. Many crusades were fought by the previous Ottoman Sultans, uh, and Sultan Muhammad al Fatih, as far as he was concerned, he was also fighting a jihad against the crusaders. There were many crusades launched against the Ottomans. His predecessor, Sultan Muhammad al Fatih's predecessors, like Sultan Murad II and his father, Sultan Muhammad I, Muhammad Chalabi, and uh, their predecessors were fighting crusades against the European powers. The crusaders kept attacking Muslim territories, and these sultans were defending these Muslim territories. Now, this is the tomb of Sultan Muhammad al Fatih. This, this, this is the tomb. So you can see we walked for a very short time and here we are.
This is where the great conqueror, Muhammad II, Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih, is buried, who passed away in the year 1481 CE. And it was in the year 1453 when he took the city of Constantinople from the Romans, the Byzantines. So you can see his titles written there, Jannat Makan, Firdos Ashian, Abul Fat, Al Maghazi, Sultan Muhammad Khan. His name is written on the tomb. This is Sultan Muhammad Al Fatih, buried very next to Al Fatih Mosque, where the Church of Holy Apostles stood, where all those great Roman emperors are buried. And now Sultan Muhammad Al Fatih is buried on top of all of them. On that note, I will stop this. So the masjid where all these Roman emperors are buried is the title. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.